the poem animals so what we need to discuss about it first of all we'll be discussing the its theme again a few important aspects of the poem then we'll be discussing it uh, what we say poetic devices i've told you like the poem animal it's written in three words there is no rhyme scheme okay then afterwards the poet walt whitman what he basically talks about in this poem it's that life of human beings or life of animals he wants to say that it's better than is better than the life of human beings now the point is how can it be so where uh, you know the life of human beings where the humanity has always been exalted as the best one in the whole history there this poet walt whitman says that animals you know they are better than human human beings and he has even proved it through various you know uh, points yes uh, finally when we'll discuss the things then i would like you to tell me like don't you think that uh, the poem is about uh, about uh, the you know traditions or the things which human beings follow the poet is a bit against them isn't it against human systems against human value systems of the human beings yes kanish <clears throat> so this is the class meant for 10th a so if anyone has come from outside can either go or remain muted so i won't unmute the child who has come from outside okay so we were talking about the poem animals so here in this poem the poet is you know talking about the fact like the animals life is better than the life of animals sorry human beings in what sense first of all he says in the very first line he says uh, they are so placid and self contained so the animals are placid and self contained this is the quality of according to the poet this is the quality of yes this is the quality of animals according to the poet and uh, <clears throat> then he says what's the meaning of placid that they are cool they are quiet <clears throat> okay so yes so the animals are placid because they are cool they are you know they never ever become either uh, er more aggrieved or over excited they remain cool and at peace with themselves self contained they don't bother about others they don't interfere in the lives of others uh they remain self contained they are self satisfied so they are contented with what they have or what they are so second thing about the animals he says they don't sweat and whine about so they don't sweat and whine about so when the poet says that the animals don't sweat and whine about here sweating doesn't mean working hard okay other uh, basically when we say like uh, he sweats means he works hard but here sweating and whining about is taken as an expression to to uh, to suggest complaining so the animals don't complain they don't cry okay they don't keep on grumbling they don't keep on you know fussing about what they have or what they don't have so they don't sweat and whine about it means that they don't complain about so here sweating and whining about sweating is a metaphorical expression used to convey that they don't complain okay here sweat is not about working hard all right so here sweat word has been used metaphorically it's a metaphor you can say they don't sweat means they don't complain 
about their condition. They, they don't make a fuss about their miseries or their struggles or the problems they face. Okay, they just remain cool about it. Then they do not lie awake in the dark. So they do not lie awake. Right? They don't lie awake and weep for their sins. So when you lie awake in the dark, basically when it's a dark at night, when you switch off your lights, we go to sleep. That is what the tendency should be. And the animals, you know, they don't keep on uh, sitting and uh, remaining awake throughout the night uh, because of some tension or because of some worry or because of some wrong they might have done in the day, unlike human beings. So the animals, it means that if they don't lie awake, then what do they do? They eat and sleep peacefully. They eat what they want to eat and then they sleep whenever they want to sleep. So they eat and sleep without any regrets. Who can do this thing? Who can eat and sleep without any tension? The one who does no wrong to anyone. Okay, the one who has nothing to bother about. The one who doesn't, who doesn't have to worry about. So they don't have to lie awake because of some uh, regrets or because of some tension. And they don't have to weep for the sins. So the human beings have to remain awake even in the darkness because they cannot sleep peacefully. They don't have that peace of mind. They are not contented. They keep on complaining about what they are. So as a result, they spend sleepless nights and keep on, and keep on asking God to forgive them for the sins they have committed. So first they commit the sins, then they ask God to forgive them for the sins they have committed. They don't make me sick discussing their duty to God. Then the poet even gets, uh, dis, uh, you know, sick. He gets fed up of the nature of human beings who keep on, uh, uh, you know, telling him about their duty to God. So this lines, you know, uh, we can interpret in different ways. If you talk about, uh, if you say that we have a duty towards God and the best duty to God is the duty to humanity first. And when you can be, uh, when you are doing your bit towards humanity, you need not be afraid of God also. Because God also, God resides in human, humans only. Okay, the form, each human is an incarnation of God. So when you take care of the humanity, then you need not bother what God will say you. But when you're doing wrong to the humanity only, then how can you expect God to be with you? So the people, those who do wrong, those who commit sins, those who keep on complaining about what they have or what they don't have, don't, those who are always uh, dissatisfied, those who are always aggrieved or, uh, you know, uh, restless, if they are not true to themselves, if they are not true to the humanity, how can they be true to God? But they keep on swearing by God that uh, they have their duties towards God. And the poet is fed up of this uh, dubious attitude of hum human beings, those who think they are doing something for God. They do not make me, they do not make me sick. The poet says that the animals don't do this. Animals don't make him sick. Like the people who say that they have their duties towards God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. What is it like? No, not one is dissatisfied. All animals are satisfied. This is what we have already read in the first line that they are self-contained. They are blessed. So all animals, you know, they are satisfied with their lot and uh, the poet is not able to <clears throat> spot even a single animal who is mad with the madness of possessions. Demented means mad with. 
no one no animal has become upset no animal is you know obsessed with the obsession of possessions no one is obsessed with materialistic things no one is demented with the mania of uh, owning things means no animal is obsessed with materialistic things whereas the the man is obsessed with possessions the man says i have this and i want this so the man's hunger for more and more never gets satiated the man is never satisfied so his hunger never gets satiated unlike the animals who are always satisfied they don't become mad after materialistic things demented means like they are mad no one is mad with mania means madness it's a mental disorder so they are not uh, you know sick of materialistic possessions whereas the human beings are not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago not one kneels to another means uh, no all animals are alike in the kingdom of animals there is uh, no one who is uh, you know superior or there is no one who is inferior all animals live together in the kingdom of animals and yes they are true to the true to themselves so if one animal has to eat another animal they do it without any you can say uh without any pretensions without uh, uh, letting them feel that they are their friends so no one kneels to another over here means that no one is superior and no one is inferior in the kingdom of animals because equality prevails there no doubt the lion happens to be the king of jungle and who says that lion is the uh, uh, king of jungle it is we the human beings who say this animals never proclaimed that the king the lion is the king of the jungle it is we who say this we we human beings have proclaimed that lion is the king of jungle but otherwise if you see the jungle then all, they are all animals feel the freedom to move around anywhere and wherever they feel that there is there is some danger they try to run away that is their own way of life but at least they don't say that lion is our king and we have to flatter him we have to make him happy had it been so that animals might have devised the way they might have you know uh, they might have been able to make out like how to uh, how to flatter the lion they might have found out different ways like human beings so there no one kneels to another kneeling is bending low requesting for your own good so no one feels inferior no one uh, you know uh, makes other feel that the other person is superior because their equality prevails nor to his kind that lived thousand of years ago so number one in the kingdom of animals no one all are alike all animals live uh, the same kind of life no one is inferior or superior and on the other hand they don't even show respect to the ancestors also they don't start worshiping ancestors unlike human beings so what's the reference here like we the human beings worship the uh, people those who might have lived some years ago and we consider them as heroic or as like gods and we worship them animals don't do this they live in the present right so unlike human beings the animals don't uh, they don't you know either flatter somebody or request somebody or or give him the status that somebody is better than him or her it's not so they are all they all live in the kingdom where equality prevails and secondly they don't believe in worshiping the ancestors so here also i'm repeating that like worshiping the ancestors means that humanity or the human beings worship the people those who might have lived here some years ago we worship them considering them to be heroic courageous or like god okay we people start worshiping them we people idolize those people now the point children here i you know there is something to be discussed is it wrong to idolize somebody who lived a good life earlier 
okay that we can discuss and the very first point which i can give you is like uh, idolizing the right people idolizing the courageous people idolizing the people who did something for the betterment of the world is not wrong because those people give us show us a way of life they inspire us to do better for the better life because those people lived by all those ethics which we value that's why we idolize them otherwise the human life is not difficult so what whitman uh, children we uh, doesn't mean that whatever the poet is saying we have to agree with him this is what the poet has the poet wrote this poem keeping in his mind a few aspects okay but doesn't mean that whatever he is saying we have to apply all of these things uh, with our own ideology but yes wherever the things are right that is okay so far uh, so far the idea that the animals are you know uh, self satisfied they are cool they don't they are not obsessed like human beings that's okay but saying that those people you know those uh, animals don't worship their ancestors now the point is like why do the why do the human beings beings worship ancestors we don't worship the ancestors who had did nothing we don't worship the ancestors who were criminals we don't worship the ancestors who were a burden on this earth we worship those people only those who did something best or those who uh, you know uh, gave us the inspiration to live like that so there is a question mark in the poem and i don't say like the poet had this in his mind okay the poet no might not have ever imagined what i am talking about right now what the poet conveyed here uh, because of, maybe he might have seen some tribal area where the ancestors might have been worshiped blindly you know where the you know uh, uh, the law of inheritance is uh, you know followed blindly so maybe he had something in that sort of thing in his mind but we can't say but if we are to follow this poem in the present context then we can say that yes if human beings worship the ancestors that is with a purpose that is not purposeless but animals don't even do that but yes the poet has something to convey even through this point that is that animals live a very simple and plain life they don't indulge in any sort of you know uh, hypocrisy or diplomacy or uh, they don't consider anyone being the god or anyone being so less for them you know life is very simple so it is basically the poet is basically uh, i guess hinting at the simplicity that these people these animals are living life of so not one is demented with the mania of owning things so they are not obsessed not one kneels to another nor uh, nor to the kind that lived thousands of years ago so they don't consider anyone either very inferior or superior they all live in the world of equality where equality prevails not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth so they are not uh, not one is respectable so it's uh, same point like for them neither is somebody who is very respectful or the one who is not at all uh, of any value it's not so so they are uh, they treat each and everybody with the same spirit not one is respectable or unhappy so no one is unhappy over the whole earth so they are all happy so they show their relations to me and i accept them so they show their relation to me and i accept them means like uh, so whatever the kind of life the animals live whatever the kind of qualities the animals exhibit uh, i am able, so it appears that the animals are possessing the same qualities which we the human beings used to possess earlier yes children the point is here the poet is coming to the point that animals possess the qualities which once upon a time the human beings also possessed so what relation have the animals with the with the human beings the same relation which the uh, the the relationship because of the qualities which human beings also shared with animals so human beings were supposed to be honest simple truthful self satisfied this is what the law of nature was when man was made to uh, take birth on this earth he was sent with the mission to remain simple truthful honest 
true to his relations, self-satisfied, placid, right, and righteous. So these things were supposed to be, these qualities were supposed to be the qualities of man. And now the poet says that it is really very, very ironic that what the qualities with which the man was born, those qualities have been shifted to animals. Animals live by those virtues, but man has turned to vice. So there has been a degradation in human behavior over the time. Mind it. The poet is not totally disregarding the life of man. It's not that man had always been like this. Okay, if we relate to our old scriptures, there these things were very plainly written. The things are written very in a way in very plain language. What those words were like uh, human life is supposed to be simple, honest, and truthful. And any human being who follows these rules, that person has not to worry about the God or anything else. So the poet says that the qualities with which the human being was supposed to live this life as, those qualities are now uh, visible in the animals. So they show their relations to me. So the point is, what's the meaning of this line? Like the animals possess the qualities which were supposed to be the uh, adornments of the man only. But now with the passage of time, with the more industrialization, with the more modernization, and all the man has become mean and vice and has uh, left all those values behind which have been taken over by animals. So they show their relations to me and I accept them. So I accept the animals for the qualities which they show. They bring me tokens of myself. Again, myself over here means human beings. So they show me the qualities which the human beings are supposed to possess. So they bring me tokens of myself. Tokens over here are the qualities or the ethics or the virtues uh, which, should, which a man should possess. So animals exhibit the qualities which I as human being should possess. And they evince them plainly in their position. And they show them, evince means show them. And they show those qualities in their behavior. Got it? So the animals personify the values or the virtues or the ethics or the moral values which human beings should possess. And how do they show them? They show those values through their conduct, through their behavior. Simply through their behavior. Plainly means simply. So they show those qualities simply through their possession means simply through their behavior. What do they possess? They possess their character. Got it? So they possess the animals, you know, show the qualities of, uh, of uh, you know, virtues and ethics through their behavior. They bring me tokens of myself. Token otherwise is, you know, a remembrance, a token of remembrance, you know, a souvenir, you can say, token is a souvenir. Okay, something, uh, something which you preserve as a souvenir, tokens. But here tokens means the qualities, the virtues or the ethics. So here also the word token is a metaphor. The word sweat was a metaphor, right? So these animals, you know, they show me the qualities or the virtues which, uh, which human beings should possess. And they evince them plainly in my position, in their position. So they show those values through their conduct. How do they conduct themselves? By remaining poised, by remaining at peace, by remaining self-satisfied, by remaining uncomplaining, okay, by uh, sleeping, uh, by having a good sleep at night and by remaining self-satisfied and happy, right? So they live, uh, they live an honest life. I wonder where they get those tokens. Did I pass that way huge times ago, negligently drop them? So in the end, there is a question. And this question shows the poet's uh, shock. It's a rhetoric again. 
the poetic device used in the last lines is a rhetoric and the poet rhetorically points out like uh, how come the animals have been able to possess those qualities which should have been a part and parcel of the conduct of human beings how come they have got something but human beings have lost it and the point is yes the human beings uh, uh, you know shed those qualities the human beings gave away uh, those qualities with the modernization or with the industrialization with the life becoming easier they became corrupt they became dishonest they became hypocritic they became you know uh, complaining they started becoming uh, uh, greedy they started wanting more and more and eventually they became restless they became uh, you know they they became very uh, the ones those who would always be complaining and would always be asking god to forgive them okay the more you earn money through dishonest means the more you have to go for charity isn't it so those people who have got nothing with them why will they go for charity a laborer you know the one who earns hardly 200 rupees in a day after doing so much of hard work will he go to give 50 rupees at for charity the answer will be no because he would know that how did he earn those 200 rupees with his own blood and sweat and blood so for him 200 rupees would be would be each and every penny of 200 rupees would be very very important but the one who earns 2 crores with a dishonest means that person will go for charity because he would have to ask god to compensate his sin with some charity also okay so that is why we say like the human beings are very you know uh, number one they are greedy and number two they are they remain awake and keep crying uh, Uh, keep crying for their sins they keep on you know uh, uh, repenting so i wonder where they get those tokens so from where did the animals get these qualities that is still a great big question so the but the point is that had, uh, that the human beings lost those qualities with the passage of time and they and the ethics of humanity gave way to unethical life which is full of vices dishonesty falsehood restlessness and greed the poet in the end what's the tone of the poet in the end in the end the poet is sad the poet is sad the way man has degenerated over the years okay we say like man has pro progressed a lot man has progressed technically scientifically but ethically or on the moral grounds the man has man has gone down okay man has not been able to prosper whereas the animals have been able to retain their position right so now the time is again going to be over the poetic devices are left let us try to do them uh, in a in a few minutes the very first like look at the book poems children the very first poetic device used over here is Uh, repetition some words have been repeated can you tell me which words have been repeated so repetition is there and the repetition of the words like come on okay the bell has gone we'll discuss the poetic devices on monday right and on monday will be your test would that be fine okay <clears throat> 